Hey guys, so we're here back again with another review, and today we'll be taking a look at the McFarland Toys of Warhammer 40k Ultramarines Reaver. And before we get into the meat and taters of this review, since I no longer have the packaging for this figure, let us first take a look see at his accessories, starting off with another very heavy metal ass looking weapon. Much like the Battle Sister, who we took a look at a week ago now. Check that out if you haven't already. He's got this big-ass X-Force looking gun. Which, uh, according to my buddy T-Biz, is just the nature of Warhammer. So, you know, I kind of figured that out on my own, but uh, it's something to note. That said, I like this gun quite a bit. Uh, you can do some damage with that. He also comes with this big arse backpack with these little thingies that fold out. I don't know what these are. Are these wings? They don't seem very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not substantial, but I guess viable. We'll go with that. Uh, they seem very small. Don't think they're going to lift him off the ground very far. But I don't believe that's what these are. I don't think these are wings. I think these are some kind of sensors or something. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what those are. This thing has a peg on the back, so you can snap it onto the back of the figure. Pretty self-explanatory. Speaking of which, he comes with the hockey puck display stand. Because, of course. Does he need it? Eh, not really. He stands okay on his own. He's a big, chunky boy. Like the uh, Hellblaster figure I looked at last year. So... Unlike a lot of uh, figures nowadays, even though he has some loose joints here and there, he ain't gonna fall on his ass. Um, other than that, it's uh, not your typical Warhammer figure. He is not the same as the Hellblaster. He's a little bit skinnier. Because I do believe the Reavers are kind of like an elite force for the Ultramarines. They're not quite the same as the big blue guy from the first wave which i don't have because y'all want too much money for that on ebay so uh piss on you um but they are like a little bit better as far as uh combat goes they're a little bit more skilled they're a little bit more deadly and uh, i like that quite a bit what i don't like is how loose this diaphragm joint is it's not the worst especially not like side to side or anything like that but it's not great it should be a lot tighter, and really, someone needs to tell that Todd father about ab crunches, because uh, they don't have this problem most of the time. Uh, for example, if I can get a good example out here, here we go. PulseCon exclusive Venom, because I can't stop talking about this figure. Look, no loose. No loose. No loose. It's snaps into place for the most part it's a soft ratchet but it still works um so yeah uh, as much as i like the diaphragm joint it looks a little better uh the ab crunch keeps them from uh, flopping all over the place so you know what i'll take that over uh, the aesthetic for a change give me an ab crunch cut this ball joint shit out because it's too freaking loose man other than that uh, this figure looks awesome um hips are a little loose too but not as bad as the torso those at least have detents in it but as far as articulation on this guy goes his head will rotate look up and down a little bit if you wanted to you can make a custom punisher out of this Ooh, i shouldn't have said that somebody uh in particular might have heard that uh, he does have a little teeny bit of tilt he could look side to side but not a lot shoulders go out to the side there's my ratchet joints. Holy shit. Um, yeah, the shoulders have ratchets this time around. They're not just some little soft putt-putt thing. Yeah, they, they go out. They can go back down if you can get them to go back down. Be careful. You don't want to bust that peg. There we go. They do rotate. They have that uh, butterfly thing going on. He's got a bicep swivel. Double joint at the elbow. Which is surprising to have it on a figure this big. 
can't remember if the Hellblaster had this or not. Because the Hellblaster is essentially the first one they did, but in red. He doesn't come with a chainsaw sword, so boo. Um, speaking of which, this guy's got two grip hands, but one weapon. That kind of sucks. He has a hand for the sword, but he did not come with one. So that kind of sucks. However, he does have the ball hinge wrists. Speaking of the hands, so you can put them in every which way. That said, if you had a chainsaw sword, I'm sure you could give it to him. I mean, heck, they made a few of them in this line now. Uh, diaphragm, it crunches pretty far. I mean, he can get some crunch. He can get some back, but I'm probably going to have to put some glue in there. To keep it from, uh, I don't know, being loose as shit. I don't know about the waist, though. The waist I might do as well, because the waist is pretty loose, too. It's not the tightest thing ever. Just kind of bobble around in there. Hips, kick forward, back, out to the side. He can do the splits, kind of, sort of. Oh, his hand got caught on the leg there. He's got a thigh cut. He does have these big bulky pouches, so that's going to hinder movement a little bit. Double knee, which is nice and tight. On both sides, I want to say. Yeah, it's tight enough. He's got the uh, single hinge foot. I say that all the time. What the hell? He's got a boot swivel this time around, which works for me. But uh, he does have the hinge in the foot with a rocker in there and thanks to the boot swivel you can actually get it to be a traditional style rocker and not a super steep one and he does have toe joints which uh, are they both uh, the one is the one's tight and neutral the other one not so much but the torso on this guy is pretty floppy not gonna lie uh, thankfully I bought him for like six bucks like the battle sister but unlike the battle sister I'm not able to uh, mod his torso joint to uh, get it to stay stiff it's just kind of loose and that sucks because this guy looks awesome but the torso joint needs to stiffen up a little bit as far as pegging his backpack on you can do that like a suit it's not uh, the easiest thing you gotta put a little oomph into it but that's what she said now if I could line this dumbass peg up come on what the crap? Uh, works off camera. Not so much on. There we go. Bastard. Thought there was something standing there for a second. I was like, what the hell? There you go. There he is with his backpack. And so a reason he's going to be uh, kind of floppy in the torso. So, you know. Again, someone tell that Todd father about ab crunches. They make a uh, hell of a lot of difference when it comes to... Uh, stabilizing figures nowadays they work a lot better than ball pegs that's for sure granted ball pegs are a little easier to fix than a loose uh, ab crunch so I don't know maybe ball pegs are better you guys let me know about that should also be worth mentioning he's got uh, little ball pegs on his shoulder pads there as far as his gun goes get the little trigger guard there get to slip it in his hand they're gummy enough to where you can Kind of wrestle it in there. There you go. And now he's holding his gun. I think he looks cool like that, right? It's kind of fidgety. So, uh, yeah. Again, I might tighten those joints up with some glue or something. The glue hasn't really been uh, substantial as of late. But uh, we'll probably give it a shot here. It usually works on ball pigs. My uh, Rebirth Batman and um, Blood Feud Hunter Spawn and uh, actually NECA Goliath have been pretty okay with that. And actually NECA Thalog, but that was a different type of joint. It wasn't a ball pig, it was a hinge. So, you know, it is what it is. I bought it on clearance, so, you know, it could be worse, could be broke, I guess. But, um, yeah, the fact that he is loose in the torso is kind of annoying. Other than that, though, I don't think anything's too loose to make him unenjoyable. So uh, I would probably recommend this if you're a Warhammer fan. If you just want a Warhammer figure to screw with, uh, 
I would probably recommend the first Blue Space Marine from this line just because that thing is a solid chunk for 20 bucks, but you're not going to get it for 20 bucks nowadays, so best of luck trying to get that, I guess. But um, I don't think this is a bad figure by any means. I've had way worse. Uh, way worse for 6 bucks, actually. So, you know, can't complain there. I did only pay 6 bucks for it. So with that being said, let's now move on and take a look. And some size comparisons. First up, here is our Ultramarine Reaver next to a couple other Warhammer 40k figures I've already taken a look at on this channel. We have the Sororitas Battle Sister, because I actually took the time to look up the full name of that figure for once. And we also have the Blood Angels Hellblaster. And for those of you wondering, no, you cannot swap the backpacks on these bigger marines with these smaller marines. Due to their different size, the pegs will not fit. So if you wanted to do that, eh, sorry, not sorry. But as you can see, a lot of variation in size with this line. The Battle Sister being the most petite and the Hell Blaster just being a big fat freaking chunk. You know, shy of being a mega fig, that's probably about as big of a figure as you're gonna get for 20 bucks. Other than maybe the Devastator from the DC Multiverse line. Let me know about that in the comments below. And last, but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legions, Brother Mandibulus, Levin Spawn, who's not towering over everyone today because, well, he is an Ultramarine after all. And does anyone else want to see an Ultramarine version of a good old Al Simmons here? I mean, I already know that we talked about Red Lantern Al Simmons, but an Ultramarine Al Simmons? That would be pretty kick-ass, if I do say so myself. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and if you are in it to collect all the Warhammer 40k figures from the fine folks over at McFarland Toys, or if you're like me and just like badass action figures, then this is a no-brainer. This is a must-have for you. But I will tell you, out of all the Warhammer 40k figures I have, granted that's not many, because I only have four at this current time, looking forward to picking up some more though, this one by far has the weakest quality control on it. There are quite a few loose joints compared to the other ones I have, but I can't say they're as loose as some of the DC Multiverse offerings from McFarland Toys at this current time. I've had way worse luck there than I have here. So with that being said, take that with a grain of salt. Maybe they're not all like mine, but Based off what I've heard, this one is the loosest of the bunch at this current time. So, with that being said, if you can find it for six bucks, then by all means. But if you're willing to drop twenty bucks on him, buyer beware. You may get one that's a little bit loosey goosey. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you're so inclined, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know whenever I upload more reviews like this one. If you haven't already, please hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions, but as always, keep the comments civil, because the world sucks enough as it is, especially when, god damn it, Todd, you need to step up your quality control. I'm sick of these loose joints. And until next time, catch you guys later.